All right. I'm just going to um, give a little introduction before we, we head into our time of, of prayer stations this morning. In every time of worship, every time we come, uh, we, we meet in faithful expectation that God is here and that he wants to reveal himself to us. Is that right? Yeah. Um, so whatever your life situation is um, or has been, we, we come together in prayer, trusting that God is right here with us. Now, when you meet someone, one of the first things that you do is you share your name with that person, right? Uh, and names in our day can sometimes just be a word that, you know, to call us by. It's just a name. But often names are also associated with who we are at a deeper level. They say something about our character, our nature, even about our destiny and our purpose. God is the author of life and the maker of the universe, but he doesn't stay hidden. God wants to show us who he is. When we encounter God, he reveals his name to us. And because of who he is, that just has to reorient us, it has to shape us in a new way and transform us. In the book of Exodus, there's a wonderful story where Moses has one such life-changing encounter with God. Moses is out shepherding sheep when he sees something strange. There's a bush that's burning, but it's not being consumed. Um, so he, he goes over to have a closer look, and God meets him there in the mystery of that experience. And God calls him to a great task. He wants Moses to lead God's people out of Egypt. Now Moses, he thought his Egyptian days were well behind him, having fled from there, and now he had settled in the wilderness area of Midian. So Moses was kind of overwhelmed at this encounter with God and with what God was calling him to. And so he protests and he says, Who am I to appear before Pharaoh? Who am I to lead the people of Israel out of Egypt? And then God promises him, I will be with you. But Moses continues his protest and he says, okay, if I do go to the people of Israel and tell them the God of your ancestors has sent me to you, they will ask me, what's his name? Then what should I tell them? And God's reply was, I am who I am. Say this to the people of Israel, I am has sent me to you. So God is the great I am. I am who I am. In Hebrew, that name is pronounced Yahweh. It's all a bit of a mystery, right? I am who I am. What does that mean? Well, in my ponderings, um, what I think it says about God is, I think it's saying that I think that God is telling us, I am known by my presence with you. I am. I am present. I'm here with you. Yahweh freely chooses to be with us. And that makes us pretty valuable, I think. Um, God desires to be with us. So much so that he came to us in the person of Jesus. And Jesus came to give us a fuller picture of what God's I am presence is all about. So Jesus shows us again God's name. And in John's gospel, Jesus says, I have come in my Father's name. And he also says, I have made known to them your name, and I will continue to make it known. So Jesus sees his purpose is to reveal God's name to us, to the world. And so in the Gospel of John, sprinkled amidst all the stories, seven times Jesus makes I am statements. He says, I am the bread of life. I am the light of the world. I am the gate. I am the good shepherd. I am the resurrection and the life. I am the way, the truth, and the life. I am the true vine. When Jesus uses the phrase, I am, we should understand that he is publicly and deliberately connecting the divine name of God, God's authoritative presence, to himself. And those listening to Jesus in, um, at the time, they certainly understood the implications of what Jesus meant. 
because we see that the Jewish audiences in the gospel, they either believe in Jesus or they reject him and even um, accuse him of blasphemy. So each of these I am sayings fleshes out what God's loving presence is like. So if you're here and you're, you're, you haven't really had that much of an experience of, of encountering God, then, then I'm hoping that these prayer stations can really help us to know, to flesh out what, what's God's loving presence really like. For us today, Jesus' I am sayings continue to reveal who God is and how God relates to us. They also remind us that Yahweh himself has showed himself to us fully in Jesus. So this morning, you're invited into this prayerful and faith-filled space where we are trusting that I am is present with us and wants to encounter us this morning. These stations have been prepared carefully for you so that you can spend some time in prayer before our Lord Jesus. Tess is just going to hand out a little booklet. I'm going to give a little bit of an explanation about how how we're going to do this next little section. I also just want to give uh, um, a big, I guess, like using David's language, a big shout out to Alethea and and the kids, um, Tessa and, and others, who have made the um, the posters on each station. So have a good look at that, and and um, and you just know that that's been made by the kids over the last month. Okay, so here's the instructions. The the prayer stations are focused on the I am sayings of Jesus in the Gospel of John. There is no necessary order to the stations. So my suggestion is that you just go to them in your own time, maybe choose one that's less busy at the time, and um, and you can can just flow around and there's no benefit to going to one first or, or to follow the booklet from start to finish. Uh, The prayer stations are interactive. So there are instructions in your booklet written in blue um, as to what to do when you're at each station. And I encourage you not to give in to the temptation to just stand back and observe. You know, sometimes when something's unfamiliar, we think, oh, I'll just sit on the couch or I'll just relax and watch what other people do. Um, Please just get in there and engage with the activities Um, You won't get much out of it if you just take that passive approach. Also remember that this is a space of prayer and I ask people to be aware not to distract or disrupt others. Um, Keep talking to a minimum so that we can maintain that prayer focus and there'll be some quiet music playing during the time. This is also a time to dwell on scripture Um, and as you spend time moving through the prayer stations, there are scripture verses Um, to read as well as a few other prayers and quotes. And as you do this, I I encourage you to take your time. Don't speed read. It's not a race. I encourage you to try and listen carefully for what God is saying to you as you read those scriptures. Uh, Each prayer station helps you to prayerfully consider what each of the I am sayings is really, is revealing about Jesus through whom God reaches out to encounter us. Also, I want to mention that communion is incorporated into the station. So you'll find that the bread is, is, for, is in the I am the bread of life station and the I am the vine station holds the cups. So communion is just going to be incorporated in uh, without there being an actual central communion time. I'm going to also invite us back together Um, at the appropriate time. So just wait until, actually, I think David will be the one to do that. Uh, He's going to be inviting us back together for a a prayer and then we'll we'll continue the service. Let me just say a prayer now and then I, uh, I invite you to spend the time around the room. Yahweh, Lord God, we thank you that you are not far off, but that you are right here with us and that you've made your name known to us through Jesus. We stand in awe again at how you've thoroughly embraced us and we want to give thanks for the ways in which Jesus comes to us and relates with us so that we might know you more and embrace life with you on your terms. And this morning, Lord, we just ask for open hearts and minds 
um, help us as we, um, as we spend this time uh, in conversation with you this morning. In Jesus' name, amen.